unpopular, even hated, is the fact that they spy on people. They stalk, they spy, they infiltrate. I'm going to give three particular stories, one after another, of extreme spying. Pat Broca was the Commodore messenger that lived with Hubbard till he died on the Creston Ranch. For some period of time he lived off the ranch, but he was right there. He and David Miscavige had engineered it that in the last few years of Hubbard's life, only they had access to Hubbard. And there was a power struggle, big time to see after Hubbard's death, who would get the church to run. And Miscavige won. Whereupon, he hired two California ex-cops to spy on Pat Broca for 25 years. Here's the Tampa Bay Times story. It's a fascinating read. Antonio Ortega reported it beautifully. It's quite a spy thriller. So these two ex-cops, for 25 years, surreptitiously went through his garbage, tapped his phone lines, listened, talked to every friend he had, knew what girlfriend he had, knew if the girlfriend did a sleepover. Every detail of Pat Broca's life was reported to David Miscavige because Miscavige had fears that Pat might want to do a power play of the church. Twelve million dollars! Where did that twelve million dollars come from? Parishna money! Extorted money from Scientology public. This is where one's donations are spent. And who authorizes it? Who authorizes it? David Miscavige. Sea Org members have no power. They don't even have voting rights. They have no power. They're little cogs in the wheel. They can't approve a $12 million bill. Only one person controls the finance of the Church of Scientology, and that is David Miscavige. So $12 million were spent spying on Pat Broca. I think a church gets tax exemption because the IRS is convinced that the church is of benefit to society. You've got to be more beneficial than harm. What is the benefit of spying and stalking and embedding oneself in the lives of an ex Org member for 20 plus years? Years! Janice Gillum, now Janice Grady, and Terry Gillum, the daughters of the vitamin specialist Peter Gillum were two of the original messengers of Hubbard. And Jenny became WDC's um, CMO. I think she was WDC FSO, flag service org. She was, she was in a very high thing. I think she was WDC Freewinds at one point. But anyway, uh, her sister Terry became executive director of Alter Services. And after some enforced abortions and other atrocities, both of them left. They both fled in pace. Jenny and Terry. And David Miscavige embedded a spy called David Lebeau. David Lebeau is one of the more odorous spies, completely Odor, uh, just 
an obnoxious spy. And he embedded himself to live with them for 20 years. So here's a PI on the payroll for 20 years, on the payroll of the church. Where does that money come from? That money comes from church coerced donations. How about Mark Fisher? Mark Fisher had um, a spy called Ferris Khan, who acted as his best friend and confidant. They talked together daily. Mark told every single secret of his, believing that Ferris was a buddy, and he was a David Miscavige spy. He continued to be a part of my life to the point where he became my best friend, and he was the person I spoke to and consulted with most. We speak on the phone at least two or three times a day, sometimes more, about everything from politics, uh, religion, finances, you name it, business, you name it. So, to summarize, the church is fanatical about intelligence. And the intelligence is used to weigh, this is, <laughs> to weigh a threat assessment of how dangerous the target might be futuristically. And millions of dollars can be spent in these kind of activities. But remember, the church is supposed to be religious. And embed embedding 20, 25 year spies into someone's life is simply not religious. There's nothing religious about it at all. It's intelligence. And intelligence is a big part of Office of Special Affairs. Designed and created and manned by Sea Org members to spy into the lives of people who are targets in Scientology.